Request an audience, you've got one. I can't help it, it's the bubbles that get lodged in my chest. Mm, there's room for a few lodges there. There I was, face down on the guillotine, with a basket full of dirty great heads staring right up at me. I've often wondered, what happens to all the heads? Oh, my dear, they have a special place for them. They call it the Napper's Yard. <laughs> <laughs> Do go on with your story, Duke, it's so thrilling. Well, the drum roll stopped. Everything went extremely hush. The executioner pulled the handle and the knife came hurtling down and bounced off the back of my neck. Bounced off the back of your neck? Yes, I had him fooled, you see. I was wearing a hard collar. <laughs> well, before they had time to recover themselves, I leapt to my feet. I seized the sword and I laid into them. Take that, take that, take this, take that, take this, take that. <laughs> And I must say, they took it very well. How many did you kill? Oh, six, seven. Six or seven? What a bloody sight it must have been. Oh, my dear, if my sword hadn't broken, it'd have been a bloody sight more. Come in. Nurse Nightingale reporting staff. Now, listen. This is a gastrectomy patient. He's lost a lot of blood, and he's having a blood transfusion. While he's unconscious, all you have to do is to see that the needle doesn't come out. Yes, staff. Now, don't leave him. If there's anything you want to know, if you're in any sort of doubt, just press that button and Nurse James or I'll be along. I understand. Leave it to me, staff. Staff? He's dead. Sir? You, sir? No, sir. Why are you blinking like that? I'm not blinking, sir. You are. I never blink. Neither do I, sir. You can blinking well do. I'm blinking well don't, sir. Stop, Major. Which one of us two is blinking here? There is only one blinking man blinking your gunner. That's bloody you! Thank you, son, Major. And furthermore, if I catch you again on parade wearing my moustache, that moustache, you'll be on charge for impersonating an officer. Oh, <laughs> later, sir. Later. How about these two? Quite dishy. Mr. Tweed, Mr. Phipps, would you like to take a seat in the Thank coach? You. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Do you mind, please, sitting down? Who the hell do you think you're talking to? I'm new to this sort of thing, and uh, I'm afraid of making a mistake. Well, you don't want to be afraid. All you need to be a good steward is tact. I'll give you an example. A steward I knew a few years ago walked in on a lady standing in her bar, took one look at her, he said, excuse me, sir, and left. Tact, see? Hey, that's dead clever, isn't it? <laughs> I'll remember that. Thank you, sir. 
Right, go on it. Hello, hello. And which of you two fellas takes sugar? Morning. Hope you slept well. event for you, my dear, watching two of your hottest suitors making a last wicked stand together. Bo and Humphrey do absolutely everything together, Papa, as you well know. Yes! Oh, Miss Wheeler. How nice to see you again. Hello, Mr. Wakefield. This is Mr. Grigg, Charles Cartress. How do you do? Welcome, Mr. Grigg. <gasps> I've met someone that's very dear to me. Was it your Auntie Hilda, dear? No, Mother. I've met this girl. This wonderful girl. Don't be silly. There's no such thing. I think I'm in love. Oh, nonsense. You're far too young. I'm 34 and a half. Well, you've got your whole life in front of you. You don't want to fritter it away on some slip of a girl. But, Mother, she's exquisite. I know you'd like her. I wouldn't count on it, dear. <laughs> there we are, then. Just got married? Yes. Lovely. <laughs> Won't be wrong now, will it? <laughs> Here we are. Right, thanks. Oh, well, what about my bag? She's already in. Oh. All right, all right. Why the bloody fanfare? Watch it, mate. New commanding officer. Blimey. Corporal. Sir? That man, he's wearing lipstick. Lipstick, sir? Yeah. Where? On his face. What do you think? Well, it must be a burn or a scar or something, sir. I hope you're right. So do I. Pretty cottons, baskets of flowers, braziers! Pardon, sir? Knickers! Same to you. I wonder what this is. Eh? Santa Cecilia's elixir. Oh, some kind of local quack medicine, I suppose. Oh, no, 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 sir. It's no medicine. It's for a l'amour. Pardon? Uh, look, you're for making a plenty of passion. You know what? You try, sir. It's good. Drinky, drinky. Well, anything happened? <laughs> How do you do? So pleased to meet you. Miss Alcock. Mr. Grigg. Are you satisfied with your equipment, Miss Alcock? Well, I've had no complaints so far. <laughs> oh, uh, equipment. Yes, yes, I have everything I need, thank you. Do you find mental relaxation follows physical activity? Oh, always. Splendid. That's all. Thank you. I have one more question. Do you favour the Swedish method? Well, I always say it's the same the whole world over. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we have a demonstration, Miss Alcock? Right here. I have a plan to save you and to get you to your home. Home? But how can I go home now after what I've done? Poor Sidney. I wonder what he's doing now. So, you're the Carty's number? Three. Three, eh? Oh, please sit down. Thank you. Very nice, too. I have come because my lord and master has taken your woman. Yes, it's been a terrible shock to me, terrible. He's he done me a great wrong. True. Yeah. I have come to right that wrong. <laughs> Funny, I was hoping you'd say that. Excuse me. Shorthouse! Sir? 
down this service, please. We're going to have a bit of tiffin. It's not time for tiffin, sir. Mind your own business. Any time is tiffin time. I'm furious. Absolutely beside myself. Yeah, best place for you. Look, I'm warning you, Nicholas. If you take that little strumpet to the party, I shall... I shall take my ankle bracelet back. Besides, you've never worn it. Oi, save something for later. <laughs> Madam? Thank you. <laughs> it's exactly 12 and 6, please, Gov. Oh, thanks. And, uh, keep the change. Oh, thank you, sir. May I wish you a very happy honeymoon. Thanks. Don't get your cases. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. It's a good job you won't be needing them, isn't it? <laughs> Hello. Hello. I wonder if you could help me. Am I on the right road to Salisbury? Yes, but it's quicker if you go through the fence the and across the pit. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, what's a nice girl like you doing with an old cow? I'm taking her to the bull. To the bull? Oh. Couldn't your father do that? No, it has to be the bull. It has to be the bull. Carry on. That's carry on. Oh, Magsy, darling. Give me a bite. Jack, whatever's come over you? I'm, I'm just hungry, that's all. Why, what's the matter with you? Nothing's the matter with me, Jack. I'm all right. Are you dressed? Oh, Mr. Delling, does it look like it? Helen! My wife, she's just getting out of a taxi. I thought she was away until tonight. So did I. Oh, well, it only means she gets her surprise a few hours earlier. It means she'll get one I didn't plan. What's that? You. Me? You. Oh, oh me, oh. Quick, hide. Oh. Not in there. Oh. You haven't got time to get out. Oh, and I'm not dressed for the street. Precisely. Oh, well, can we in just there. Plain? You see, I have deceived you. I don't really need a babysitter. Oh, well, in that case, I'll just be going. But I do need a man. Mrs. Panting. You will help me, won't you? Well, d depends what you want. You. Why me? <clears throat> Why me? Well, it could be any man, really. It just, I thought it better keep the whole thing on a professional basis. I must have a man by 8 o'clock. Yes, well, we only supply helping hands. Why 8 o'clock? Because that's when he gets home. Oh, so yes, does he? Who? Mr. Panting. My husband. No, my... Panting! Let me go, you beast. Who can I help it if I'm irresistibly attracted to other men? Where can we be alone? Eh? Hey? Oh, quick, there's only two days left. For what? Come on. Yeah, I know. Oh. That's better. Oh. Nobody can hear us here. Why shouldn't they hear us, miss? Because what I have to tell you is rather delicate. Oh, well, naturally, if I can help you in any way. Well, the plain fact is, my friend's in love. Oh, how nice. Well, it isn't. You see, she doesn't really know she's in love. But I know, and I want to help her by getting the man in question to approach her. And how do I come into all this? You know him very well. I do. I do. Me? I can't believe it. Well, that's life. That's love. Women fall for the most unlikely creatures. Thank you very much. Hello, sorry. Oh, nearly finished here, Ted. Wait a minute. Oh, I'm going to hurry, take time. What do you mean? I've got to get home and do my hair and get changed and do everything yet. Oh, you don't worry about all that. Well, you, you don't think I'm going to London looking like this, do you? No, I don't. <laughs> you see, well, look, 
Smiley hasn't turned up yet, you see, and there's a lot of bookings come in, and, well, I knew you wouldn't mind if I just... Look, Sal, please don't do that. I know you won't do that, Sal. A beautiful wine for a beautiful lady. Well, was that supposed to be a compliment? <clears throat> Better taste the wine first. <laughs> Better watch it, you'll be pinching your bottom next. Not for me, thank you. No, don't drink. No, I tried it once and didn't like it. Oh. Have a smoke? I tried it once and didn't like it. Strange. Not at all. My daughter is just the same. Your only child, I presume. <laughs> You've seen this, I presume? Yes, but you have no right to be in here, Mrs. Prantworthy. Never mind that. Do you mean to tell me that in my absence, the committee actually approved this disgusting idea? Mrs. Prantworthy. I hardly think that this is the time or the place to discuss matters. Oh, Poppycock, oh. I've seen men naked before, you know. Damn it, I've buried three husbands. I'm not surprised to hear it. Oh, where are you going? Going on one of those hill farms. Oh, what about Fred? He's taking the caravan. He's off fishing. What, on his own? No, with Ernie Bragg. I'll oh, brag up the electrical shop. Yes, that's right. But well, what about Ernie's wife? She's coming with me. Hey, talking of Ernie, when's he coming to see you about that fridge? What do you mean, when's he coming? He came when you nipped out for a pint. He's in there. Oh, no! I've shut the door on him! Ernie! But, Columbus, we are an impoverished country. Exactly, sire. And the only answer to Spain's problem is to speculate. One must speculate to accumulate. Unfortunately, one has to accumulate before one can afford to speculate. Precisely, sire. And how better to accumulate than to acquire in one fell swoop all the treasures of the Indies. How right you are, Columbus. How wise. What makes you think he's up to it? I have seen his testimonials. I would like to see... The master of the house. I'm afraid my brother is resting. Will I do? Will you do? What, miss? Perhaps you'd better come in. What must you think of me? I'm such a terrible hostess, I haven't offered you a thing. I wouldn't say that, miss. Do you drink? Not on duty, miss. Do you smoke? Not on duty, miss. Well, do you mind if I smoke? No, of course not, miss. Thank you so much. I was trying to give it up. 